Section 1. In this section, you will hear a conversation between a student and a job hunting agent. First look at questions 1 to 10. Now we shall begin. You should answer questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 10. Section 1 Good morning. May I help you? Oh, good morning. Is this the Student Job Center? Oh, yes. Um. I was wondering if perhaps you could tell me a bit about the job. You know, the hotel recruitment program that offers a range of work at the hotels in the area. Of course. Take a seat, please. I'll take you through some of what we have on offer. Thank you so much. Oh, wait a second and I'll get my pen. OK. The first job is reception assistant at the Parkview Hotel. The Parkview Hotel has quite an international flavour, so you'll need to speak at least two foreign languages. Sure. I can speak fluent French and Spanish, so that's no problem. Good. And many guests, of course, travel by car. And you may have to take their vehicles around to the car park, so you will need to have a valid driving licence and you will not be allowed to do the job if you haven't. OK, I got that. Right. And they also say that basic computer skills, such as word processing, would be an advantage, although this isn't a requirement. Well, I just got my computer skills certificate, so I have no worries about that. This is quite a varied job. And in fact, I should point out that at certain times of the day, it would involve heavy lifting when guest luggage arrives or perhaps deliveries come in. Is that OK for you? Well, it's hard to say at this moment, but I'll bear that in mind when deciding whether to apply for this post. Sure. Another job is general assistant at the Lakeside Hotel. To be honest, the pay is rather low, but there are compensatory factors. For example, the hotel will provide you with all your meals while you're working, and they will also train you in all the aspects of the job and then issue you with a certificate, which, of course, could be very valuable to you in the future. Oh, that sounds great. Now, the third job on offer is catering assistant at Hotel 98's Smart New Premises. As you know, this hotel is popular with exclusive travellers, and so you'll need to wear the distinctive staff uniform which you're provided with. Don't consider this job unless you're fairly flexible about when you work, as the hotel will require you to work nights for this job and you will need to travel to and from the hotel, as it is situated just outside the city. Well, I'm afraid I can't manage that because of the lectures. OK, I get the picture. So, which one will you prefer? Reception assistant at the Parkview Hotel, or general assistant at the Lakeside Hotel? Well, I guess I still couldn't make up my mind right now. Can I have a few days to think about and go back to you later? That's no problem, and there are a few things I need to clarify with you. If you would like to apply for one of these jobs, you will need to follow the recruitment process. Mum. So the first thing you'll need to do is to fill in one of these, a personal information form. 
It's pretty straightforward and should only take you a few minutes. Once you've done that and handed it in, we'll give you a questionnaire about your skills. We then look through the information about you and pass on our recommendations to the relevant hotel. Yes, sure. You will then proceed to the next step of the process and attend a general course of training. This is designed to be helpful and realistic, so an important part of the course is role play activities. That sounds interesting. Yes, indeed. And after that, the final step is that you will be contacted by the hotel you're going to work for, and they'll post you a video about themselves and the work involved. Watching this will constitute further and specific training for your job. Oh, yes. I think I'm very clear now. Thank you for helping me. It's a pleasure. Bye. Bye. This is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. You will hear a doctor from a medical center giving some information about the center. As you listen, answer questions 11 to 20. First, you will have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. As you listen, answer questions 11 to 14. Section 2 Good morning, everyone. I'm John Smith, the General Practitioner of London Fields Medical Centre, and I'm very glad to give you a brief introduction about our practice and some suggestions about how to see a doctor here. Our receptionists are usually the first point of contact and are here to help you. They have a lot of information to hand and in most cases will be able to help you with your inquiry, ensuring you see the most appropriate clinician. OK, right. Well, the first thing to do is to register. We can only accept new patients who live in our practice catchment area. To register with us, you will need two proofs of address, such as bank statements or tenancy agreements, plus one form of ID, such as passport or driver's license. If you are foreign nationals, then you'll have to register as a temporary visitor. Then, fill in this form. It's a medical history form. You have to give details of any illnesses you have had. Then, you also need to write down if you've got any allergies. OK? This as well as that. We need to know if you've had any operations. And, last of all, you have to give full details of current medication you may be on. This as well as that. You need to fill in this registration card. This is for your personal details. That's your full name, address, and telephone numbers. OK? And we also need to make an appointment for you to see the doctor 
for a new patient health check. It'll just take about 15 minutes, that's all. It's just a basic checkup, really. Before the speaker goes on with his introduction, look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen to the continued talk and answer questions 15 to 20 by choosing the appropriate letters. Okay then, let me tell you something about the health centre. We have five GPs here, general practitioners. We also have a practice nurse who looks after minor injuries. She can also administer some treatments. We also have a chiropodist. That's a foot specialist. She's private, which means you have to pay for the service, unless you're over 65. If you want to see a doctor, you have to make an appointment first. Please call our main switchboard number on 0207 923 8100 to book an appointment at either our main practice or one of our branch surgeries. You can also email for an appointment on londonfieldsmedical at nhs.net. Urgent cases are seen on the day. If your condition is non-urgent, you can expect to see a GP within two working days, though you may have to wait longer if you want to see a particular GP. If it's an emergency, you'd better come straight here to the centre. One of the doctors can usually see you. Or you can go to the emergency department at the hospital in town. If you are very sick, you can ask for a home visit as well. On Friday afternoons, we have an open surgery which means you can come along and just wait to see a doctor. But you may have to wait for several hours. So it's much better to make an appointment and come at the specified time. Usually when you see a doctor, you'll be given a prescription for medicine which you need to take. Or you can choose to go to a pharmacist in a chemist's shop. If the doctor decides that you will need the medication for a long time, you will be given a repeat prescription form. This allows you to get a further supply without seeing the doctor again. You simply leave the repeat form here a few days before you need it. Then you pick up the medication at the chemist's. Oh, you may wonder how much this all costs. Well, there is no charge for seeing a doctor. You can make an appointment any time to see one of our doctors and it will not cost you anything for the consultation. However, you need to pay for the prescription and the cost varies with the medicine, but it's usually just a few pounds. Nevertheless, in some situations, such as pregnancy, the prescription is then free. All right. Do you have any other questions? That is the end of section 2. You will have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turn to section 3. In a moment, you are going to hear a conversation between a professor and his student, Alicia. As you listen, answer questions 21 to 30. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 30. Now, listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions 21 to 30. Section 3 Until recently, we knew almost nothing about how important bees are in maintaining natural diversity. Now we know more about them. We know, for example, that bees fall into two categories, wild bees and domesticated honeybees. A main reason for the domestication of bees has always been the production of honey and beeswax. We also know that honeybees are the dominant pollinators. In addition to bees, wasps, moths, butterflies, flies and beetles, as many as 1,500 species of bird and mammals serve as pollinators. Many crops of commercial importance, such as almond, cherry, avocado pear, watermelon, cucumber, rely on pollination by insects. And of these insects, bees are by far the most important. Animals and insects provide pollination services for over three quarters of the stable crop plants and for 80% of all flowering plants in the world. The economic value of animal pollinators to world agriculture has been estimated to be 200 billion US dollars per year. Pollination is one of nature's services to farmers, so think about this. If you eliminated the pollinators, it would take the food right out of our mouths. We biologists never imagined we'd see the day when wild plants or crops suffered from pollinator scarcity. But, unfortunately, that day has come. In fact, farmers in Mexico and the US are suffering the worst pollinator crisis in history. So, what happened? Any ideas? Alicia? It is, um, because of natural enemies? I read something about a kind of parasite that's killed lots of bees. It's true. An outbreak of parasitic mites has caused a steep decline in North American populations of honeybees. But parasites aren't the only factor. What about the pesticides used on farms? All those chemicals must have an effect. Most definitely, yes. Pesticides are a major factor. Both wild and domesticated bees are in serious trouble because of pesticides. In California, farm chemicals are killing around 10% of all the honeybee colonies. Agriculture in general is part of the problem. Another example is the monarch butterfly. Millions of monarchs from all over the US and southern Canada fly south every year in late summer. The monarch is the only butterfly that returns to a specific site year after year. Unfortunately, the herbicides used in the milkweed in the Great Plains are taking a toll on monarchs and fewer of them are reaching their winter grounds in Mexico. In a recent field study at Cornell University in the US, it was found that monarch butterfly caterpillars 
eating corn toxic pollen blown onto milkweed plants near cornfields had suffered significant adverse effects leading to death of nearly 20% of the caterpillars wow 20% that's so tragic and it's more than that there are over 1500 species of butterflies in the indian subcontinent but their population is dwindling because of environmental changes many man-made environmental changes like deforestation extension of farming and unrestricted urbanization are threatening some species of butterflies to extinction by destruction or disturbance of their larval as well as adult food plants feeding grounds and shelters many of the most spectacular and endangered species have various levels of protection under local legislation however there is a major trade in the spectacular tropical species for incorporation in ornaments and souvenirs the international demand for insects is greater than most people realize yes indeed i once read an article about another important pollinator the long-nosed bat these amazing animals feed on cactus flowers but they are having a tough time too some desert ranchers mistake them for vampire bats and they've tried to poison them or dynamite the caves where they roost yes we must recognize that pollination is not a free service and that investment and stewardship are required to protect and sustain it so what can be done about this situation well wildlife farming you know based on sustainable exploiting wild creatures can help to save endangered species like butterflies and their habitats besides gardeners orchard growers farmers and urban dwellers can switch to more pollinator friendly organic methods of cultivation to reduce wildlife exposures to insecticides herbicides and fungicides that's right actually the focus on beekeeping needs to change from conventional honey production to crop pollination That is the end of section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Part 4. You will hear part of a lecture about social importance of sports. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. As we know, sports have become increasingly popular in recent decades. Historically, many sports were only for the wealthy and privileged, but now certain games, such as football and basketball, have become available to ordinary people. 
they are now being taught in schools and at local clubs. One reason that sport has become so widely popular is that they involve a large percentage of the population, drawn from all around the country, creating excitement and anticipation for the event. Also, in recent times, sport has played a huge role in many large sectors of the economy, such as fashion. They often go hand in hand. Certain brand names of sports clothing have become increasingly popular, creating a multi-million-dollar industry. Everywhere you go, people proudly wear such brand names. From being merely clothing for sports players, these brands have now become must-haves for this season's wardrobe. Since sport is becoming ever more competitive with international events such as the Olympics being held here regularly, there is a drive to create better products used in sports. For instance, new material is being created for sports clothing and other equipment to reduce drag and improve the efficiency of the players. The technology incorporated in these is of a high standard. Playing sports is a healthy activity, with different sports suitable for all ages, from the very young to those getting on in years. To improve the overall health of the nation and to create a greater sense of community involvement, governments in many countries aim to increase their citizens' participation in sports. In some areas, there are even incentives for taking part in sporting activities. For example, with cinemas handing out free tickets to those involved, sports can be very competitive. And although some experts warn that a spirit of competition isn't healthy, many agree that this competitive spirit can actually contribute to a greater feeling of achievement. With such a positive effect. Many therapists recommend sport as a way to improve mental health, and many participate with this focus in mind. Of course, the media has had an enormous impact on sports. The rise in popularity of uncommon sports like underwater hockey and parkour is fueled by the increasing availability of satellite television. However, this can unfortunately lead to personal injury and sometimes even loss of life, as more people attempt to copy these sports players without the appropriate safety precautions. Digital television has also played a great part in promoting sports. Every part of a sport event can be replayed and analyzed. For example, controversial or exciting moments in each game can be filmed from different angles. Certain feats can also be presented in a more impressive way than they really are. Partly because of this, games are becoming more and more prestigious, with players trying different tricks and techniques to make themselves appear more skilled than their opponents and to draw attention from the crowd. People often learn about sports through television and the internet. Many feel it is easier to remember certain elements they have learned from a visual source. Rather than learning from a book, the traditional way of studying, knowledge about sports in books is limited, as some sports maneuvers cannot be accurately depicted in a picture or in writing. Newspapers, however, remain a popular means to gain information about the results of sports events, and many people still check the cricket scores in their local newspapers each week. Unfortunately. As sports stars are becoming ever more famous, people are becoming increasingly interested in their everyday lives. The newspapers often publish articles about them, including personal details that the players may not want shared with the public. There needs to be a greater respect for the privacy of these individuals. With sports becoming more available to all, now is a good time to join a local team or just spend some time playing a cricket match. Or a game of football with friends. This can improve your own fitness and lead to greater quality of life for you and your whole family. That is the end of part four. You now have one minute to check your answers to part four.